As Israel and Hamas descend further into war, the prospects for a broader Israeli-Palestinian peace deal seem further away than ever. But 30 years ago, that peace appearing on the cusp after decades of conflict. In May of 1948, a new Jewish state, Israel, was born in a bath of blood. Neighboring Arab states launching a war against Israel after it was founded. The international community envisioning a Palestinian state, too. But Israel fighting with Arab countries in conflicts like the Six-Day War and Yom Kippur War, alongside clashes with Palestinians, preventing that state from fully emerging. One of Israel's fiercest soldiers in those years, Itzhak Rabin, growing into a warrior of peace after being re-elected prime minister in 1992. Rabin spent many years in the Israeli Defense Forces. He knew the cost of war better than most. Rabin opening a door to negotiations with Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat's Palestinian Liberation Organization, or PLO. At that time, the PLO designated a terrorist group by the United States and a tumultuous Palestinian uprising called the First Intifada in full swing. After months of preliminary talks, Rabin reluctantly met Arafat in Washington. Bill Clinton had to coach him along and say, I know this isn't easy. I know this has been your enemy for a long, long time, but here's our opportunity uh, and we should grab it. The two, once bitter adversaries, shaking hands and their delegations signing the Oslo Accord. Enough of blood and tears. Enough. The difficult decision we reached together was one that required great and exceptional courage. The PLO would recognize Israel's right to exist, and Israel would begin transitioning control of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank to Palestinians. The deal, just the beginning for Rabin. Israel signed a peace treaty with Jordan in 1994 and another Oslo Accord with Arafat in 1995. What could be the most promising step yet toward peace in the Arab lands that Israel has occupied since the 1967 war. That November, Rabin speaking at a giant rally for peace in Tel Aviv. But just as he left the stage, tragedy. Four or five shots rang out and Rabin collapsed into the arms of his security men. Rabin killed, not by a Palestinian, but by a 24-year-old Israeli extremist who opposed the peace process. A blood-stained paper found in his jacket pocket. On it, lyrics of Shir La Shalom, or a song for peace. One he sang on stage just moments before his death. In the days following, a national moment of silence. At 2 o'clock this afternoon, the city of Jerusalem ground to a halt. Rabin's death shocking the world. The world has lost one of its greatest men, a warrior for his nation's freedom, and now a martyr for his nation's peace. I'm very shocked for this awful and terrible crime. The fallout of that traumatic loss inflaming hardliners on both sides of the conflict. Rabin's assassination was a tremendous blow to the peace process. Israel soon drifting rightward in the vacuum of a strong leader pushing for peace. You had Israelis who were in profound doubts about the wisdom of negotiating with the PLO. And Bibi Netanyahu was at the forefront of those with those doubts. Netanyahu coming to power for the first time in 1996. Violence soon flared back up. Bus bombings as part of two more intifadas that killed thousands. Israeli settlement construction ramping up. More peace proposals falling flat, a blockade of Gaza, and now another war. But when this war someday ends, perhaps a new generation of leaders will look back at this moment, recognize how close peace felt, and be inspired by some of Rabin's last words. In every central square of every city, scream out and cheer, only for peace. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.